welcome everybody to First Lutheran. You on YouTube and um, on the radio, we welcome you all to worship this morning where we can praise and thank God for all his blessings that he gives us. Now we will open with, as you're able, uh, for with song 771. Steadfast love endures forever. Let us confess our faith in the presence of God and of one another. Take a moment for silent reflection. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting ourselves before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to all. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Sisters and brothers called to freedom in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. And also with you.
Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, our hearts to the reaches of your grace, that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Genesis, chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, this man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. This ends the first reading. Today's Psalm, Psalm 33, will be read responsively. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people chosen to be God's heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees all humankind. God sits firmly enthroned and watches all who dwell on the earth. God fashions all their hearts and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by the size of the army, nor are warriors rescued by their great strength. The horse gives vain hope for victory Despite its great strength, it cannot save. Truly your eye is upon those who fear you, O Lord, upon those who wait for your steadfast love, to deliver their lives from death and to keep them alive in time of famine. Our innermost being waits for you, O Lord, our hope, our helper and our shield. Surely our heart rejoices in you, for in your holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, even as we place our hope in you. Our second reading this morning is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received the power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven 
and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had the opportunity to return, but as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. This ends the second reading. Gospel according to Luke, the twelfth chapter. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes, truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in this beautiful place that we can come and worship you and praise you. Thank you, Lord, for all the faithful servants here in First Lutheran. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we can learn together and understand your word. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. In our gospel today, Jesus is reassuring the disciples and us by saying, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We have all experienced fear at one time or another in our lives, like the darkness, strange noises, being lost, being alone, of a strange animal, sometimes not being accepted. Even though our fears don't seem big at the time, they are genuine and can be debilitating. I'd like to share with you a few experiences of some of, my, some of my fears. When I was a child, my oldest brother, Dale, and his friend, Duane, thought it would be funny 
to scare Dale's wife, Joanne, who was standing at the kitchen window doing dishes. Well, at that time there were no dishwashers. They had devil masks on. They knocked on the window and naturally, Joanne screamed. Little did they know, all of us little ones were under the table. My brother, my niece Susie, her two siblings, brother and sister, who were their twins, Dennis and Debbie, were under the table playing. We all started screaming. We saw the devil's mask too. Our, re our fear was real. My brother and his friend came in trying to comfort us. And I remember my sister-in-law hitting my brother, saying, shame on you. From that time on, us kids, or at least me, couldn't watch a scary movie with the devil or any kind of demons in it. Fear does strange things to us. There was another time as a kid in our front yard one afternoon, a little gardener snake was slithering across the sidewalk. The boys, my brother and my nephew Dennis, got real close to it. And the snake seemed to be on its tail chasing them. And the boys thought it was really funny. I ran to the porch and stayed there while the boys played with that ugly snake. The boys were laughing and thinking it was really cool. Finally, the snake slithered off into the grass. It took me a long time to get over that. <laughs> to this day, I'm still fearful of snakes. <laughs> All I could think of that day was a story I heard as a child of that snake in the garden tempting Adam and Eve. Do not be afraid, little flock. One summer, several of our family members made a trip to the Borood Lee Valley Ranch in South Dakota. My nephew, Mark, had bought a toy snake. Oh, yes. It was with the intentions of scaring me. We were headed to town to do some shopping. I was in the back seat next to the sliding door in the van. Mark wiggled that toy snake in front of me, and it caught me off all by surprise. So I grabbed that irritating little toy snake, opened the door while the van was still run moving, and I threw it as far as I could throw it. Mark, Jennifer, his wife, and my sister Estelle got a big laugh out of it. Well, I guess all of us got a pretty good laugh out of it, but not after I had called Mark a few letter, few four-letter words. Yes, fear is real and can be debilitating. Only with us trusting Christ to give us peace and comfort can we put those fears to rest. Fear not, little flock, the Savior is with you. In Psalm 33 today it says, Truly the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in him because he trusts in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, rest upon us and even as we hope in you. So we can put our fears in his hands and give, he gives us peace and comfort. Then those fears diminish with his love and protection. I'd like to read some from our lesson in Hebrews 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that, we, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. When I see the words by faith, I think about Abraham and Sarah. Their faith was really strong. It was incredible. Abraham obeyed God when he set out 
for a place he didn't know. He had no idea where he was going. He stayed in a foreign land in tents. Abraham received the power of procreation, even though he was very old and Sarah was barren. Abraham had a strong trust in God. He kept his eyes on the true home, their heavenly Canaan that God had promised. I'm sure at some point, Abraham and Sarah were actually laughing at God's promises because of their age. But God, who is faithful, he had the last laugh with blessing them with a baby in their old age. Isaac and Jacob were heirs of God's promise too. We also have the real inheritance like Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, and Jacob of eternal and spiritual blessings which include forgiveness of our sins and redemption through Jesus' blood. <clears throat> this means in him, Jesus, sinful life and death on the cross paid the price to release us from bondage to sin and death. There are times we must take a leap in faith in the dark. When we do, we find that the universe of faith is a lot more real than we think. The assurance of hope, things hoped for, helps explain some of the things that don't add up in the standards of the world, but make all the difference for us as God's people. I think back to a, the year my husband Mike was diagnosed with lung cancer. His cancer was advanced and inoperable, so Mike feared what was to come. Mike wasn't an every Sunday worshiper, but he was always making sure that us kids, the kids and I, were going to Sunday school and worship. Our church family rallied around us. They were a tremendous witness for Mike. He had decided to do radiation and chemo in Yakima. The members here at First Lutheran took it upon themselves to give Mike a ride to his appointments Monday through Thursday. That freed me up to stay home with my grandson, Taylor. Mike's drive, time with his drivers was priceless for him. Mike's fear seemed to almost disappear, not quite, as the days went on. My uncle, Alton, was dis dedicated to making sure that Mike was saved. So he visited Mike every week. They usually sat in the backyard under the tree. <laughs> they laughed, they did a lot of talking, they read God's word and they prayed. We had six months to prepare and spend special time with each other. I remember Mike's doctor saying to him, if you have vacation plans, take them now. Our favorite place to go was Lincoln City, Oregon. So we made the trip happen. The weather was gorgeous, and Mike enjoyed being with the kids and playing with Taylor. We enjoyed the sunsets and the sun, sunrises and naturally the campfires. The last day, Usually, we walked on the beach before we left. Mike was getting ready for his walk. I asked him if he wanted me to go with him because he was weak and I didn't want him to fall. He smiled and he said, I need to do this on my own. <clears throat> I remember watching him stand by the oceans looking out into the sea. Over the next few months, our kids, Kim and Jeff, were able to have their own one-on-one -on -one time with their dad. Towards the end, Mike was able to understand and verbalize the words from Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. This is a gift of God. This is a gift of God. Mike's fears turned into a great thanksgiving. He went to be with his Savior on December 27, 19, 
94. In our With One Voice hymnal, I cherish the words in the response to the word. We say, in Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. And I say again, we are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. That is so reassuring. We are able to keep ourselves in the love of God. We are in the love of God. And if anyone, anyone at all is in Christ, there is a new creation. In our gospel, Luke 12, 39 and 40, but know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house been broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming in an unexpected time. We are warned to keep watch for Jesus' set coming. We will rejoice in earth and in heaven when that happens. But first, we need to be witnesses for his love, mercy, grace, and peace. We are to invest and help those who are oppressed widowed and orphaned. We do good works and acts of kindness because we love Jesus as he loves us. We help in our community through giving money and food to Fish Food Bank, the winter shelter, giving quilts to several agencies and those in need, the nutrition program, visiting the shut-ins, supporting bread for the world, Lutheran World Relief in Times of Disasters, Lutheran Seminaries, encouraging the youth in Bible study and intergenerational events, mentoring both youth and old to take a certain interest in the ministries here at First Lutheran to carry on God's work. Remember, God's work, our hands, we also support the ministry of the radio and being involved in some kind of a Bible study with each other. There are numerous ways we can share the precious love of Christ. We have all heard those words at one time or another, get your house in order. We all will face God one day to answer for our actions or lack of them. Be strong. Be bold about your faith. We walk close to Jesus knowing he walks before us, behind us, and beside us. <clears throat> Do not be afraid, little flock. He is our shepherd and will lead us. I cannot help but be reminded of Psalms 23. Jesus is the faithful shepherd leading us and keeping us from harm. Our shepherd invites us to rest in green pastures. Can you imagine the satisfaction in the heart of the shepherd when he sees us resting in tender grass? Then he leads us beside the still, cool waters. We, the little flock, learn to fear no evil through daily taking up our cross and walking through all of the trials and tribulations that we face. As Christians, we bask in the promise of God being with us always. Then we will dwell at home with him forever. Stay awake, keep watch, for you know not when he will come again in all his glory. Do not fear, little flock. Amen. As you're able, we will join together in the song that um, this actually came from one of our, our youth um, gatherings when I was a young girl. It was called Unafraid, and we will sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 5.
Let us confess our sins with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Share the peace with one another. And I'd like to thank everybody for supporting First Lutheran with your envelopes and your uh, leaving the envelopes at the church and through Vanco. And we will share in our offering now. Thank you. Let's pray together the offertory prayer. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day, you shower us with blessings as you have raised us to new life in Christ. Give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, 
Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with your spirit. Equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Dwell among us and sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. In places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon your world. Be our helper and our shield in places torn by strife and violence. Raise up cur uh, courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, let your loving kindness be upon your children. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Counsel those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you. Especially we pray for Pastor Linda Esterling and husband Mike, Lani Mayer, Carrie Renke, Diane Sable, Dong Letterly, Fred and Charlene Watterson, Geraldine Childress, Ken Hunter, Samuel Heron, Dave Lundy, and Yan E. King. Lord, in your mercy. In the we pray for all servicemen and women and their families, especially Micah Barnhart, Eric Herson, and Jake Ferris. We pray for all members and friends of First Lutheran. We pray for Christ, the King Lutheran in Goldendale. And we pray for our companion synod, Yolanga Kellenbarrow in Tanzania, and for our fish food bank. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for Jennifer Campbell with having heart problems the family of Jean Cutlip at her passing, Matthew Ferris in China. Be near to all who are ill and dying of COVID. Bless all those distributing the vaccine. Sustain all worry, weary health workers. Lord, in your mercy. We continue to pray for an end to gun violence and hatred for all who are hungry and homeless, and all the refugees, for protection for the people in the nation of Ukraine, that the war might end soon. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, we pray for families that are battling cancer and for all 4-H kids and their helpers preparing for the fair. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, be with all the firefighters as they battle the fires in the valley and around the nation. Give them enough to drink and rest that they need. Lord, in your mercy. Be with Pastor Dennis and family at, for his much needed vacation. Be with them, help them to be renewed. Lord, in your mercy. Mentoring God, enliven the youth going to Luther Haven. Fill them with the Holy Spirit and guide, lead, and direct them in all that you, they do. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our <clears throat> and now, as we remember in our, your kingdom, teach us to pray, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Continue to walk in Christ Jesus, rooted and built up in him. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Are there any other announcements? I'd like to remind everybody to take a look at the um, books that are on the tables out there. We're kind of regrouping and getting rid of books. Um, we also will be buying some new books to go when we finally get some bookcases. Um, so take a look at the books out there. There might be one that you'd like to see. So I hope you have a chance to go by and look at the beautiful artwork that's in the um, Fellowship Hall. That was our most recent art therapy session. We are planning for another one in the month of September, so you'll get more information as it gets closer to time. Um, we also have a fun field trip scheduled for Wednesday the 24th at 6.30, I think. We're going to meet at the planetarium. Bruce Palmquest is going to help us with that. It's mostly going to be the youth, but all are welcome to join us. Um, and I'll get more details, and we'll have a sign-up sheet next week on the bulletin board so we can kind of get a head count and know what to expect. You want to tell about the... Today is a very important day. So important. The youth are leaving today at 5... At not 5. 11.30. At 11.30 to go to Camp Luther Haven for a week. We are very excited. Please, every youth, meet in the fellowship hall later today to make sandwiches and get ready to go. Thank you. So youth and uh, parents that are going to be driving, we're going to, the, the little countertop where we normally have desserts is going to have sandwich fixings. Please, um, it, anyone's welcome, but be sure that the youth get it first in case there's not enough. Um, but So help yourself to a sandwich, and then we'll be ready to go a little after 11.30. There's eight youth going this year, so we're very thankful to the church to help support us on that, and we're excited. And we've had several kids in the church also go to Lazy F camp, so we're very thankful to the church to support camps. And we have VBS coming up soon. If you haven't signed up to volunteer, it's not too late. If you haven't signed up, registered your kid, it's not too late. It starts next Sunday, and each night we will have a family-friendly dinner that all are welcome to attend. Um, things like mac and cheese and corn dogs, Spaghetti. pizza, tacos. Spaghetti. Really family friendly. Um, so everyone's welcome to join us each night at 545 for a family friendly meal starting next Sunday. Spaghetti. <laughs> and then we're going to have um, opening ceremonies and then the youth are going to take our kids through to play games and learn Bible stories and have a good time for a week. So please if you are not registered or know someone that should be, the forms are out on this uh, front table. Please take them to your neighbors or whoever you know needs one. Thank you. Hi, I'm doing the crafts and the alligator is morphed. I need two egg cartons per alligator because it morphed to having a mouth and legs. We need more egg cartons, 12 count, and more toilet paper rolls if we can because the alligators develop legs now. So it's really morphed into a really neat thing, but I need more supplies. If anybody would like to help paint the legs, um, I will be here Thursday and Friday from 10 to 2. You're more than welcome to come help paint legs. That's the easy part. I've been painting the top part, and that's the hard top. But I've just realized I'm running out of time. Again, Thursday and Friday from 10 to 2, if you're so inclined to help paint legs. Now let's join together in our sending hymn 705.
you said that. <laughs> okay. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thank you, God. <laughs> mm -hmm.